What's going on guys? This week we're going to be taking a look at the Dancing Cans box, an animation throwdown. The first card we're going to be looking at, like always, is the legendary pre-combo card, Dancing Cans. So in my opinion, this legendary pre-combo is the best legendary pre-combo there is right now for music cards. It has some really good versatility. It's 13 attack. It's not great for offense, for attacking, but it does have some great support. You do have that 18 heal to other musical cards, so it can be a great supporting healer card for your challenges and rumble matches. You also have 5 shield all that go to any friendly cards, not just music ones. So once again, another fantastic support skill to have. You also do have 12 punch, so while it doesn't while it isn't going to be hitting too hard with its 13 attack, it does have some nice support there from its punches. It does have that 60 HP though, which also makes it a phenomenal card to run defensively, especially in an all music deck. So all of these things put together is why I think it is one of the best um, legendary pre-combos for music, because you can run it as really good support offensively, and it's a really great defensive card to run for Rumble as well in a music deck. Now let's take a look at the legendary items in the box. First up is the new item, K-Pop Cleveland. This is actually a pretty good versatile card. For an item, it's 13 attack, it's kind of right there in the middle. It's not too great, but it's also not horrible either. It's pretty average. The 47 HP is also, it's not that low, but it's also not above that 50 um, mark that I'm looking for on defense. But when you factor in its skills there, it does have eight sturdy and seven hijacks. So that extra bit of sturdy puts that 47 HP over that 50 threshold that I'm looking for for defensive cards. And plus hijack is just always a great annoying defensive skill to have. So this can work phenomenally on defense because of that. And also because it's 13 attack, you can run it pretty versatile on attack as well. It also does have that nine recovery so if you are running this on defense and your AI combos other combos down the line, that 47 HP is going to start climbing up pretty quick to higher counts there. So all in all, a really good card to have. I also like that it's Family Guy in music, so I'd have to take a quick look at the combos to verify, but if it does combo with, um, with Peter to give you the K-pop Peter and some of the other um, Family Guy cards as well, it could be a pretty good card for Siege as well. But I'd have to double check those combos because I'm not too familiar with the combos that K-pop Cleveland makes right now. And the second item in the box is one that we've talked about before, but to recap, Golden Fiddle is, out of the new music cards they just released, the best offensive one. It has 18 attack, which is way up there for an attack card for an item. The only thing that beats that out music-wise is the old card, Turning Jeff. It also has 38 HP, which that's a bit on the lower side, so I would be hesitant to run this defensively. That being said, though, you do have 9 payback, so if it can survive a hit, it will be dealing some payback damage, but it is a bit risky with 38 HP. I'm hesitant to really run anything with less than 40 HP in a defense deck, period. Other skill-wise, you have some pretty good support there with the 10 cheer to other friendly musical cards, so you can support your card line if you're running an all-music deck. And you do have that 11 jab, which is great because that'll be busting through any um, sturdy walls and also any of the shields that are being applied to music cards right now for the Battleground effect. And the last item in the box is Earl's Guitars. We've also talked about this one previously in other box reviews. It is the best new music defensive item in the game. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it is the best music item in the game for defense. It has an astounding 58 HP, which is already way above that 50 bare minimum that I'm looking for on defense, but that's really close to 60, which if you can get a 60 plus um, HP card on defense, that is the A1 golden zone. You also have to buff that up over the edge, 9 Sturdy and 9 Bodyguard, which makes this card a tank. It does only have 8 attack though, so don't be counting on it to be doing too much damage for you. It's more there just to absorb some hits until the AI can combo this card. That's going to do it for all the legendary items in this box. Now let's take a look at the characters. So the first character in the box is Philip J. Fry, probably one of the best characters to have in the game for your deck. If you can get your hands on several quad fuse copies of Fry, then you are in a great spot because he makes a lot of fantastic combos across almost every single battleground effect for every trait. So you can never have too many fries. He's also a great one to have for Siege for offense if you're going to hit a Futurama Island as he makes some of the best combos for those as well. Base stats, he does have 18 attack, which is one of the highest base for a character card to have. 38 HP is a bit on the low side though, that does fall under that 40 minimum that I am looking to run defensively. That being said, I have at times run one or two in a defense deck as like a wild card because while it is risky to run anything with lower than 40 HP in a defense deck because they can get taken out pretty easily, on the off chance it does not get taken out immediately and if the AI does combo it, that combo will be dealing some massive damage. 
Not to mention, if it does survive that first hit before it's comboed, it is dealing back some 7 payback damage there, which is pretty good. You also have 10 boost on this card, so if you are running this offensively and you are controlling your card line, you can set it up to where if you don't combo Fry right away, you can increase his attack by 10 for every other combo on the field you make. So you can already make him a pretty hard-hitting powerhouse all on his own if you play him strategically. His 10 shield there, you're not going to see too much use of outside of Siege though, unless you're running all Futurama cards, because that shield does only go to Futurama cards. That being said though, like I said, great for running a Futurama Siege deck with Fry, because you have a lot of good combos there, and also, if you have a bunch of these on the field, they'll be shielding each other by 10, which is pretty good. And the other legendary character in the box is the new Meg Griffin card that they just released a few weeks ago. So to recap on Meg, I think she's pretty versatile stat-wise. The 12 attack is nothing too great, but it's not too horrible either. Her 46 HP, while not above that 50 range that I'm looking for, it's still high enough above 40 where I could see running her maybe on defense if you needed to. She also has that defensive skill set up for that 7 bodyguard which helps protect her as well as some flank cards there which is always really nice to have on defense. The 12 leech is also great to help keep her HP up near full every time that she gets an attack off so that's always good to have leech cards and you do have that 13 heal. The only drawback to the heal though is it does only go to family guy cards so you're not going to see too much use of that outside of Siege unless you're running an all-family guy deck. That being said, um, Meg is, honestly, I don't have her yet, but just looking at her over the past several box reviews, she's starting to grow on me. The more, the more I look at her and the more combos I actually start looking at for her, the more I'm starting to like her as a card. I still want to see more support from Kong on future combos being added for her, but I think they're definitely on the right track with her as a card. That's it for the legendary characters in the box, now let's take a look at the epic pre-combos. First up is the new Clarinet Stan epic pre-combo. As far as epic pre-combos go, this one is pretty bad in the sense of it being any use to anybody at the pay to win level for the top levels. However, if you're still free to play or newer to the game, if you can get a quad fuse copy of this, it'll serve you pretty well on defense. While it's um, base stats of 13 attack and 42 HP aren't anything great. His skills are what make him great on defense. He has 9 payback and 7 hijack, which the combination of that is great. Because that 9 payback is annoying to deal with. If uh, your opponent's hitting that in rumble, payback damage is always annoying to deal with. And 7 hijack too is going to prevent craze from being triggered. So you're going to keep your opponents from being able to get their attacks higher with those craze combos. You also do have that 11 leech, which is nice to help keep this card alive a bit longer. So yeah, skill-wise, it's pretty great there. The only thing I don't like about it are its stats. That being said though, like I said, if you are still at the lower levels of the game, like if you're free to play completely, or if you're newer to the game, if you can get a quad fuse copy of this, by all means, feel free to run it for a while on defense. You'll have some fun with it. And the other epic pre-combo in the box is Boombox Teddy. This is another one where I'm not the biggest fan of its um, stats, but I do love its skills. The 13 attack, once again, nothing too special. 43 HP is also on the lower end there as far as pre-combos go, but skill-wise he does have that 8 sturdy, which is always nice to help buff that up a little bit, make it uh, a little bit more solid. You also have that 9 recover, so if it does survive the first hit or two, if you are making other combos, you can increase that health pool a bit. And my favorite skill for it is that 10 heal to other musical cards. This card, once again, I would say is um more better suited to the free-to-play players and the newer players of the game if you can get a quad fuse of it. That being said though, I can see this as having some use to players at all levels of the game in an offensive deck to take advantage of that 10 heal if you need some healer cards for challenges and rumble. So my final thoughts on this box. The legendary pre-combo Dancing Cans is honestly in my opinion one of the best if not the best musical pre-combos you can have. It's phenomenal for defense and it's got some great versatility for offense because of its skills there for support. Your three items are also pretty good to have as well. You have one very versatile one there with K-Pop Cleveland. Golden Fiddle leans a bit more on the offense than defense and then you also have the Earl's Guitars which is the best defensive item for music in the game in my opinion. So you have a pretty good mixed bag there covering pretty much every area you would want. 
As for the characters in the box, both of them are actually really good characters to have in my opinion. Like I said, Philip J. Fry, you can never have too many of him. I think, I, me personally, I'm currently working on making my 8th or ninth quad views of him. So like I said, you can never have too many Fry's. As for Meg Griffin, she's still newer to the game, so she's got that shiny new appeal to her. And like I said, she has been growing on me, so not a bad one to have a, quite a few quads of either. Especially with Siege, she's kind of changing up the whole dynamic there for Family Guy Islands, which is pretty cool. As far as the epic pre-combos go, not gonna lie, I was a bit on the fence with them because while I am not a fan of their stats by any means, their skills for both of them are actually great. Like I love their skills, I just wish their actual numerical stats for attack and HP were a little bit better. So when I factor all of these factors in together, I was kind of on the fence between either a four or five um, turret review on this the thing that was um, keeping me back there was those epic pre-combos because of the stats, but because of their versatility for those skills, because of those heals, and because of how good I feel all of the other items and cards are in this box, I think I have to go ahead and tip the balance towards a perfect 5 out of 5 Golden Turd rating. Anyways, thanks so much for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to click that like button, and if you're new to the channel or haven't already, be sure to subscribe and click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you get notified of new uploads as soon as they go live. Till next time, peace.